Okay. Hello, welcome back with me, everyone. Valerie Williams of Dimensional Talent Streams. We are back this week with another special guest, and she is going to introduce herself. She is new to the Dimensional Talent Stream platform. She is a business owner based out of Canada. And without further ado, I'm going to let her announce herself, introduce herself, tell us about her business. Uh, why she's in the business that she chose. And we're just going to take it from there and have some fun. So welcome. Hi, Valerie. Thank you very much for having me. Yes. Uh, my name is Sadie Sahoda. So I'm from Vancouver, Canada. Um, I, I'm a founder and designer of Hip Pillow. I just, um, I'm, I'm still a startup. And so I just, I designed a pillow for myself. And then um, it's, I was in a car accident, but this pillow is for everybody. And uh, so, and I thought I should take it to the market. You know, other people like me who are having sleepless nights deserve the best sleep. So that's what I decided to do. Awesome. That That is phenomenal. So you're out of Canada. Is that yes. correct? Okay. Yes. So tell us, I know you talked about the car accident that you were involved in and just having that desire to have, get relief from pain. How did you come up uh, with the design for your pillow? Do you have one there physically that you can kind of show us? Um I can I can show you pictures. Um, you know, I on I share a screen. Um, I don't I actually because I only have one hand, so I oh. didn't yeah, so I fractured my wrist. So I, I I'm trying not to use it too much. Um so yeah I um I was in a car accident and I I, I was in pain and I would have a lot of um sleepless nights and I knew my body needed um sport in certain areas and so I, I I bought the knee pillow I bought the body pillow knee pillow I, I was always sort of like I felt like constraint because I had to hold it between my knees and uh, and if, when I was moving you know and it was I would wake up in the middle of the night and body pillow was just too big it was just I didn't know what to do with it other than just like kind of sleeping beside it. Yeah. Um, and so I, I had other couple of pillows that I purchased because I thought, you know, then maybe they will help. And then I, I thought, you know, I know exactly what I um, need and I can sew, you know, and so I deci decided to um, make my own pillow. It was a uh, kind of bulky the first time when I made it. I, I didn't know like how big it should be. So um, I slept on it. It was very comfortable. It supported my body. And, you know, I was able to sleep. I was ex actually really ecstatic when I woke up at 6, 6 a.m., you know, because I, I used to, like, lay there, um, you know, wake up around 1, 2 a.m. and then just, just sort of, like, lay there waiting for morning to happen. And then when I was just like, wow, you know, and so I, I, I didn't really right away. I didn't think you know, I knew that other people needed it. It's not like the next morning I was like, oh my gosh, I'm just gonna start selling it. No, I didn't do anything with it for about a year. I just thought enjoyed it. You know, I slept on it, and then I was just like, it's, it's a really big challenge to take on, you know. And so I, um, I was just like, you know, I should, I should just do some do. It do some research. So I started looking um, at like if there's anything similar to um, the pillow I made in the market, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't find anything. They were like something like a little bit similar, like body pillow. There's a new big, really big body pillow that you can sort of sleep on in the middle of it. You know, I, I found some pillows, but they weren't, um, they weren't what I, what you, you would, call like fit everybody and so I started talking to friends and family and I was like you know what would you want in a pillow like you know like and so um a, a one friend of mine said I travel all the time I want something that I can travel with you know she said right. um so then I was like so it has to be like compact enough that you can put it in a bag and take it with you and so other people were like you know um I, like I have a knee pillow it just like I have to hold it it has to be sort of like free flowing and some other people said you know we we I uh, this uh, this other um, male friend of mine he said oh I have sleep apnea and I need something that will support me you know mm -hmm. said that so that I don't fall on my back and um, so it, it, like the questions went on and then I was just like you know what I need is a is a pillow that is um 
compact that it's adjustable to different shapes and sizes and also multifunctional that does like not just one thing like you know you don't want to carry like five pillows with you if you're traveling you need one pillow that you can right. um so but my well, hip pillow was born it, it is four pillows in one and but you can take them apart put it in a bag and you can just like carry it with you it comes with a traveling bag so you don't even have to look for a suitcase or another bag um so it's it's a it's uh five pieces there's a base pillow and then there's this knee pillow that attached to the base pillow and then there's like two side pillows and then there's this this um like you can call it convertible or adjustable uh, loop that goes around those two pillows to hold them together so that you don't have to look for it in the middle of the night, you know, because when we sleep, we just kick, we move, right. we, you know, and so our pillows, my pillows are always like somewhere else, you know, sometimes they even fall off the bed. And so I, I knew that I wanted it to cradle the body, you know, really like and stay there. You, you, you didn't want like I don't want people to just go and or myself like go looking for the pillow. And what's the point of sleeping if you have to like in the middle of the night wake up and look for your pillow? And so yeah, so I I created this pillow that ha that keeps you your body supported and it stays in place. And yeah, that's how the hip pillow was born. And I and then I once I I knew like what I needed. And then I was like, what do I do now? And then I went on Alibaba and I was just really scared. I, I first I looked uh, around in US and in Canada. I thought if it's in US or in Canada, if there's a factory where I can go and I can tell them exactly what I want, you mm -hmm. know, and then it's so much easier because um, send, sending a message to somebody in China, it was kind of scary, you know, because I'd never done that. Right. And but then I there was I couldn't find a factory in Canada or US. Um, I did some research, uh, but I, I there, there are some factories, but I just couldn't. You know, that's how it went back then. And so I contacted some a lot of factories on Alibaba. And so th then what I liked, I, I think I spoke to like 15 people. I went back and forth, back and forth and, you know, asking questions and so this there's this one person stood out and so i asked her i said can you first i didn't ask her anything else i said can you send me some sample pillows so she sent me some late i wanted latex because it was natural you know and so i she sent me a sample pillow and then i sent her the design i said this is what i want and so she sent me first pillow and i was like oh, you know this is good but not perfect so I, I showed it to people and then I, you know, and got some more feedback and then I um, sent her another message. I said, this is what, what I need. And it, it was, it's hard when you're not there, you know, yeah, so yeah. I would just draw pictures and then we would have like phone conversations and video conversations. I would tell her like exactly what I need, what I want. And then I would just like make because I can sew, so I would make things and say, this is how it's supposed to go. Um, and this is what I need, you know? And so she was really good. So she helped me um, make, it took months. It, it's it's not it's not even funny how long it takes because um, we're so, I, I am, I'm very impatient. I, it, but this this process has really taught me patience because yeah. it, yeah. it takes months and months, you know, like when you contact these factories they're, they're not like you're not the only ones you know that maybe contacting them they so they take their time they take their sweet time so they i was just like ah oh, you know hurry up yeah. and so they're like no but i have to talk to the factory and nobody got back to me from the factory and so it was it was really really hard for me to be patient but it i just finally i needed to like take deep breath, just like sit with it, you know? So it, and it takes like months to um, get your things back, you know, like shipping, um, like I, samples I got paid like four or $500, you know, just for like shipping. Cause it, if I wanted it within a week or two, then I had to pay that kind of money. And so, yeah, so once I got the sample, then I was like, okay, now we have to really, you know, go and get this done. And so I started contacting 
like I um, nonprofit organizations in Vancouver that help women. And I had other contacts, other women who I knew they were in business. And so this is how, you know, it took took me months to like sort of, I didn't want to just like go and like buy inventory and not know anything what to do with it. So I first I wanted to learn and talk to people, you know, and so I got a mentor. I have like a couple of mentors. I have a mentor in US as well. I wanted to um, do crowdfunding and uh, then all this china shipping costs and you know and the electricity rationing all of this happened and so the the person i was talking to about crowdfunding suggested that you know it probably is not a good idea to do crowdfunding because prices went up like crazy mm -hmm. and also with um you know like mm, people were like around Christmas, it was just like it just it was crazy because we weren't getting their shipments on time. So I took the whole month of December off because I was just like, I can't be like exerting my energy and not getting anywhere. So it was just right. like, I'm just gonna sit back. So in January, I finally ordered some uh, inventory and I'm still waiting for my inventory to get here. Um, so they, and then the um, New Year's, Chinese New Year happened and then uh, I had to take another break. So it, it's, a, it's a long process. And if there's somebody who's doing, who's listening and who's doing it, and if they are getting anxious and, you know, they're getting um, impatient, you know, um, it, it's, it's you just something you just have to really take a deep breath and just sort of like go with the flow because right. you don't want to get your health um, and, you know, you don't want to get sick um, and anxious and stressed and, you know, you really need to, your health comes first and you really need to take care of your health before anything else, you know, so that's what I had to learn, you know, my health was more important than any business. So, um, so finally, my my inventory is ready and it's uh, ready to ship, and so I'm excited. And, Congratulations! Uh, thank you, thank you. And so I I was um I I had to change a lot of dates, like move them somewhere like a little bit forward. But I I was hoping to do it um launch in uh, on March the first, but I don't think that's going to happen. I think I'm probably going to have to move to April first or something like that. Okay, okay. well April. Yeah, but, April is not too far away no, because we, no. this week is the last week of February and then we're in March. So I know, yeah, I yeah, know. I mean, it's amazing how time is flying by. Flying, I love yes. your story. I mean, I have a healthcare background and so I mix, I kind of join healthcare along with business. Uh -huh. um, and I, and I talk a lot about that in my YouTube station, Dimensional yes. Talent Streams, like, subscribe, follow me for those who are listening and watching. Um, and I marry the two. And one of the videos that I have talks about business, health, and fitness. Yeah. And it talks about how we are the face of our business, we're the poster of our business, and it gets back to taking care of ourselves because yeah. the health starts with us and then yes. it bleeds into the rest of our lives and who mm -hmm. is around us, you know, our family, our business, and it just trickles down. And if we're not in health, then, you know, it's going to trickle down and affect our business and what we love and our loved ones. And so I also try to marry the, the revenue that comes into our business along with that health aspect as well. And how, you know, and just joining the two of them together, like dealing with mindset and our attitudes and character and integrity mm -hmm. and how all of that not only shapes um, us, but it affects our business. Cause again, we yes. are our business. And so there's no separation between the two. And I think mm -hmm. as business owners, we get so caught up in the day-to-day -day of our business that we've got to yeah. go back to the foundations, which is us, look at us, go back to that starting point where it all began yeah. and, and revisit those areas. And I just put out another video talking about uh, revisiting the foundations of yes. our business, those basic things that we yeah. started out in business and revisiting them. And if we have an expertise in a particular mm -hmm. area, going back and looking at that expertise and figuring out how we can grow even further and creating additional revenue for your business. So I love how you touched on that. I always healthcare is like the, I come from a family of nurses. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, they, yeah. they expected me to follow suit and become a nurse. And 
I love business like how men like cars. I love business like my mom oh. bought it. <laughs> Oh, great. That, yes. Yeah, you were that, able to do the family thing and yes. bring in your own passion into that. Yes. And I remember, yeah. and I always share this story when I was graduating out of high school, my mom, you know, I came out of private school and my mom and dad put me through private school for years. And then when I graduated from high school, they were like, okay, we're done paying for you to go to school. It's time for you now to pay for yourself and you will go to college. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, of course, you know, education yeah. is such a big part of who we are and, and so forth. And so they made me, Sadie, draw up a business plan for what I was going to do to go to college wow. to support myself, a business plan. <laughs> and, yeah, talk um, about like, pressure. Yeah, they were like, what's going to be your major? We think you should be a nurse. My dad wanted me to be in the army or to do something related to that to give back to the U United States. And back yeah. when the GI Bill was big, go, to, you know, get your education paid for and learn a trade and all that. So he was big on that. And I'm like, dad, I'm not jumping out of planes. Mom, how about I run the hospital? and yeah. be the administrator of the hospital to keep yeah. you employed. Because if that hospital is not running officially, you're gonna be out of a job. So you mm -hmm. need somebody who's gonna run that hospital. And she was like, okay, <laughs> uh, put that in writing and make, give us your plan and yeah. come back and tell us about it. And if, it, if we approve, then we'll let you go and okay. pursue, but they yeah. wanted to see a plan. Yes, and that yeah, was my yeah. first introductory because I was like, "Mom, I love business. I don't know what yeah. it is, but I love business. It's just in me." And yes. so I majored in business management and whatnot. And to the, you know, but I now I know she's laughing. She's in heaven, and I know she's laughing yeah. because she's like, "You're still, you're still doing it. You're still right. touching on the healthcare." And so I know she's like laughing in heaven. But mm -hmm. I love how you touched on that. I loved how you touched on learning and mentors, which is huge. Yes. Yeah. Like I can't say enough about that. So talk to us a little bit more about how you came up with the name Hip Pillow. What what is some practical things within your journey thus far that you would share with business owners and entrepreneurs from your journey that you have learned so far? Then we'll, we'll start with the name. The name I just um because I had the uh, so the worst pain I had was in my hip. Mm -hmm. So that's where, because I wanted it to like cradle my hip. So this pillow cradled my hip. And so that's why I called it hip pillow. Okay. Although it is not really uh, just a hip pillow. Mm -hmm. it, it just sort of sports you because it's a perfect pillow for side sleepers. So if you're like, you know, when you sleep on your side sleeper, okay, me too. And when you sleep on your side and you like, because your whole weight is on one side and you, you side like whole side hurts you know when you wake up sometimes and so um what it does is it doesn't it sort of takes the pressure off of your side because mm. there's a pillow supporting your back and so it takes the pressure off of your neck your shoulders your hip and your uh, back and your knees you know because there's a knee pillow attached and so that knee pillow um attachment aligns your um spine because i have some medical professionals um on my team so i have a, a dis a discussed and you know get, get feedback from no, sure. I have a, I have massage therapist, physiotherapist, chiropractor. Um, you know, I am actually just looking forward to um, this week talking to um, orthopedic surgeon, um, so I could talk to them. You know, like what what, what kind of pillow? Like, would they this pillow help? Um, you know, people who um, have like surgery, like hip surgery or knee surgery, while they're um, healing you know mm. so i really want them i don't want this pillow to be just my passion and say what well, people should buy it i really want this to be a pillow that can that helps other people you know it's not it, this business isn't about me it's about uh, oh, providing wow. comfort yeah. for you mm. know for people who actually are spending the money so um that's that's how, how the name came um about you know um I call it hip pillow plus because it was like first it started with hip pillow and then I was like it's not really hip pillow it's hip pillow plus because it has it's so much more than just hip pillow and so that's why my website is um, hip pillow plus dot com. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. You know, because yeah, so it's it's uh, it's plus. You know, it it does more than just hip. And uh, so yeah, it's my journey was um it was it's it's a it's a very scary journey. You know, any anything life is life is you have you moving forward and then you have to make uh, decisions and you know finances and there's so many things that come with with just living. You know, and so business isn't any different with than just living your life you know it's something that you're doing as part of your life you know and and we all have to make a living you know and so it, it jobs are hard businesses are hard you know getting married is hard having children is hard so um this is this is just part of that life you know and i it, it there are a lot of times when i i want to give up you know because it's hard you know but then i have to talk to myself and say you know well you can't live um give up on life you know um hard times are gonna come um you have to sort of tread through and make decisions because uh, my my biggest challenge is making decisions because i find um that i want i'm a perfectionist i want a decision before i make a decision i want to know the outcome i want to know it is the perfect decision and this will be the outcome but i i have to really it's a hard way but i had have to learn i'm still learning i'm in the process of learning that um there's no such thing as perfect um decision and nobody knows the outcome even if it doesn't matter how perfect your decision is um outcome might not be exactly what you thought it would be because i have made decisions where i thought it would be uh, the outcome was quite what i wanted but just the journey through to that outcome was like oh you know like back breaking you know where you just like why god why <laughs> <laughs> why can't you just yeah, why can't you just put it in front of me? You know, like, but that's that's not how life is. I, as I'm getting older, I'm getting wiser, and I know that you got to get through. You know, you got to walk the walk. You know, to get to your, your, you know, your uh, whatever your goal is. You know. Yeah, so, yeah, I love that. I, you know, I, I love to. This is why I love the collaborations to hear the different journeys with people yeah. on how they got into business, what they do to maintain and keep themselves motivated and you mm -hmm. know the frustration. Because I think a lot of times when people look at business owners, they look at, they're looking at what they're looking at, that present state, right? Yeah. And so they don't see the journey or they yes. have these formulations that they get instantly from looking at where you are in that present moment, but they yes. don't take into consideration the journey and the behind the scenes to scenes, get there. Yeah. You know what I mean? The, the, the blood, sweat and tears of being up to three o'clock in the morning and working, you know, 12, 14, 16 hours to, to get your business just to have some legs and a foundation. Yes. Um, and so I, I love how you touched on that, just about your journey. So with your journey, Sadie, tell us a little bit about your background. Like what was your background before, you know, you, you know, all of this developed with your business with Hip Halo Plus, what was your background? I actually came to Canada in 1985 with a master's degree. No, out of just just out of university, no experience, nothing. Mm -hmm. I got married and moved to Canada. And then Canada said, uh, what master's degree? We don't give yep. credit. Yeah. And so so I was just like kind of heartbroken. I was like, what? I still know everything. And plus, my master's degree was in history. I was like, but the Napoleon is the same even in India. You know, it's not. <laughs> so it's not like, you know, he's a different Napoleon if you study in, in India. So because I, I studied European history um, and history of art and Indian and history of religion, you know, and so I was my history wasn't just about, um, although it would have been like amazing just to study um, Indian history, but I wanted uh, broaden my horizon. So I studied a lot of different kinds of history. So um, 
I, I was, you know, so I was sort of like, I started thinking like, what am I going to do now? And then when my first child was born, I started, um, I took flower arrangement course and while I was pregnant. And so I did that for at home, sort of like on the weekends, I would make um, flower arrangements for weddings. And then I, I was very interested in like beauty and makeup. And so I took the um, aesthetics, you know, um, course and so i i managed a medical office you know where they did all sorts of good stuff like botox yeah and, yeah, the yeah the all fillers and you know and that, that sort of stuff and so all sort of lasers and that was really nice but it was just so busy i loved it because it was just so busy i, I didn't have time to sometimes eat but I, I just really loved it and then i um after like in, i then i was starting to get like really tired i was getting older i was in my like late 30s and so it was just like i i you know I was approaching 40 and i was like i can't um and plus I started ha like having, I didn't know, but I was having, a, I went into early menopause and I was like really um, having a lot of health issues. And I thought it was my job that was causing all the health issues. But later I found out that it was also my early menopause. I started menopausing at 28. And by the late thirties, I was just like going into post menopause. Like I was, I went into post menopause after like before 40. And so that's when um, when I quit that job and then I went um, um, and I just took some time off and then I started my fashion design company and uh, with like everything was done in Canada and uh, then all the Canadian factories just started closing, you know, and um, my factory closed and so I didn't want to go to China and get like a huge in inventory and so I was like I'm going to take some time off and sit back and then I started working for the city um, my city government and I was um, an assistant assistant executive assistant to the uh, uh, director of finance you know and when I quit because uh, she bullied me and I was just like I can't deal with this you know mm -hmm. and uh, it, she was she was going through something it was it was a really hard time at the at the government, you know, a lot of changes were happening. And so she sort of took it out on me because I was the first person. So I quit. And that's when um, I was just like, sort of like I'd taken a few years um, off when I got into the car accident. And I was like, you know, this is what I need to do. You know, this is, I need, need uh, cause I'm at home, I'm free. I need to really put in my uh, hundred percent into this business. So this is where I'm at. That's awesome. It's interesting, too, because we really don't see that thread that yeah. follows, you know what I mean? Yes. You know, because, you know, although I loved business, I always sought myself as helping other business and, and helping them to develop and to grow mm -hmm. and to just get their let their bearings and, and to yes. even expand, which, you know, which is which is what I'm doing right now. But then the other part of it was having my own. You know, I didn't factor in having my own business. It was always other people, other people. Yeah. And um, just seeing how the healthcare pole ties that in. So I'm looking at your journey and just seeing, okay, you know, she, you know, she had the beauty industry yeah. because you can still deal with that industry. Like when they're having their cosmetic surgery yes. and, you yeah. know, and just their healing process from that. And that is yeah. something that you can use today to even relate to that particular audience about pain and how you were in that industry and how you loved it and da 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 because you can talk yeah. about some of that inside stuff stuff yeah that they can relate to you know what yeah. I mean um and you know really push those pain points that those women have as they're healing from you know different mm -hmm. you know surgeries that they had but also seeing um the the beauty industry as well as the fashion because then mm -hmm. you picked up sewing and so who would ever thought that you're sewing and, you know, you're just love for fashion and beauty would trickle down into you creating a pillow and then pillow, yeah. your own, own business. So I find mm -hmm. it interesting that, you know, there's always something within our life that is never wasted. I mean, there is always something in your life that is going to follow you and help develop your future. You know, you can yes. pull something from out of your journey from your past and it helps you to um, get you on your trajectory and get you to your future, your promise, your destiny. Uh, so I just, I love to see that thread and it's, it's really- You know, Job Steve's, um, job, Steve Jobs, not Job. Steve Jobs said that. He said, well, you, you when, when you're walking, you can't see it, but when you look back, you can connect the dots. Yeah. You know, so that's, that's what life is about, you know, 
know, and I, I have actually uh, recently decided, you know, that you know, whenever I make a decision, I always ask myself. I love Oprah, and I've like watched, I think, everything Oprah, and I like two, three, maybe five times some of them. And so I, I always ask, in, what's my intention? Is it fear or is it like love? Do, do I really? Is it I'm doing it out of love because I love doing this or am I doing it because I'm afraid I don't have enough money, I don't have this or I, I don't, you know, so I'm, it has so made. Talk about that, talk about yeah. that, Sadie, because especially for new business owners and when yeah. I, my definition of a new business owner is anybody who's been in business five years or less. Yes. That's yeah. my definition of a new business owner. That is a real pain point um, yeah. for new businesses. Talk about how you get around that, that, you know, that let that um, confrontation, I'm going to say, of yeah. finances and revenue. How do you deal with that? Um, I, I, that's what I, you know, I, I, we all want to make money. We all want to, you know, we have to pay our bills. We have to live, you know, and, and we need money. You know, sometimes we need a little bit of extra money for like comfort and enjoyment, you know, right. and there's nothing wrong with that. I had a really bad distorted um, belief about money because I grew up in India and my yes. belief was every time I wanted money, I just like, I stopped myself. I was like, no, 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 no. Just give us health and, you know, um, happiness. Because I, I thought I I was worthy of one or the other. I wasn't worthy of all of it. Because that's how I, that's the kind of environment I grew up in, you know, where, um, you know, where I was told that, you know, like too much money isn't like, don't, don't ask for money, ask for like, other things i i think nobody really sat me down and said you know like do this i just sort of picked up that from everybody around me you know um, and i can't say like my family was uh, poor or anything we were you know we were doing well you know um we had food on the table my parents took good care of us you know we we they paid for everything all the schooling i was i i don't know <laughs> I, I never had to worry about it. I have a master's degree. I never had to worry about how to pay my fees or food or shelter. They paid for everything, you know, and for all of us, you know, my brother studied in, in uh, boarding school. So, you know, and so they, they, they really, I don't know, my parents probably struggled or I don't know how they did it. We didn't even ask them like, you know, or, are you, uh, um, comfortable doing all of this they never asked us they never you know um made us feel that they're get, doing favor for us so we I, we were always but you know i had people around me and then you go especially like i think religion really messes us up although i love religion i love god i love everything i i love the religious um social aspect of religion but sometimes uh because those people who are preaching to us are humans and so they always when you and i was very we we lived in a small town and india is very religious we just like love oh i know i've been to india <laughs> i was i was in india for a month uh, oh, did you? Yeah. yeah. And so we are all about religion. We're like, I would go to the temple every single day, you know, like we would, that was our evening walk. We would walk to the temple, spend, you know, whatever time. And then when we were children, we would go to the temple and like, there were like fruit, like we had big temple and there was like fruit trees and everything. And there's in Indian Sikh temples are like, there's so much food. And so we would sometimes go there for the food. And so it was, and then they would talk about like how money's evil, money's bad, money's this, money's that, but yet they like, they're rich and they like want all everything. They want money. Like even churches here, like mega churches, they have planes and private jets and everything, but so how do you is, all that? So now looking at where you are, how yeah. have you been able to, I, I had to retrain myself. I said, money is not evil. Mm -hmm. Money is, we call money Lakshmi. We money is, is energy. It's, you know, so uh, it's as money is as important as is energy, just like water and air and food, you know, and so I needed to tell myself like, 
take a deep breath. You know, you, you don't have to um, ask for somebody else's money. Just ask for yourself. You know, all I want is, you know, I'm not asking, I'm not going out and stealing money from somebody. That's bad. But if I say I want to work hard for this thing and I want to do this, money will follow, you know. And so instead of saying like, oh, no, no, I, I don't think I should do that, you know, because money is bad. Well, am I doing it for money? I don't I don't question myself. I'm like, I'm doing it because I love doing this. You know, once I am doing enough, you know, the money it has to follow, you know, so that's not, um, money is not bad. So that, that one belief I had to really get rid of, the money is not bad and I'm not taking from somebody else. I'm just taking what's, yeah, what I'm working for. Yeah, yeah so that's, that's so, good. Yeah. so, so, so good. And, you know, as you're talking, it just, it just, it just reaffirms some of the content that I've created because again, going back to Dimension of Town Streams YouTube video, like and subscribe, follow, comment, um, and also follow me on ljdnpodcast.com every Tuesday and Saturday. Um, what you said, it, it just reaffirms, like I said, the content that I've created on my YouTube channel because I did one a couple of weeks ago, maybe about a month ago, but it talks about our perception on wealth and yes. prosperity. And I really walk through, you know, what wealth is. And, and I, you know, I kind of go back into history and, and, and bring it up to current and, and so forth. And I also have another one on generosity and what yes. generosity means, you know, and as business owners, how we can be generous, you know, and it's not so much even monetary, but be able to be give back with a product, providing a product that's free or, free or something, or giving back to another organization in your yes. community, or bringing in some interns who have a love for business and want to have their own business, and bringing an intern in to help you out, or some creative way to kind of give back. Yes, yes. And so I talk about that. So I'm glad that we kind of hit this, you know, about mindset, you know, and I love how you talked about you had to retrain yourself yes, into perception, yes, yeah. and you talked about where your perception came from. It was from your environment. It was from yes. what was around you and what you yeah. picked up in your environment. And you just, you know, you just, that was what you knew. That was what was around you. And that became a belief yes. system. Yes. And I talk about, even on my YouTube videos about limiting beliefs and what they beliefs, are yeah. and, and how they can, how those limiting beliefs hold us back and keep us in bondage and in captivity and yes. can even do that with yeah. creating wealth, with creating, you know, prosperity for us um, yes. in so different ways. So, so good. My mouth is watering. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's another one of my soapboxes. I cannot say enough. But Sadie, you know, time's wrapping up. I want to thank you for being such a special guest and, and joining us on the Dimension of Talent Streams platform. Stay with me for a second longer, Sadie. Uh, that's going to wrap it up for us, guys. If you want more information on the Hip Pillow and how to find Sadie, it's Hip Pillow Plus dot com is her website and tell us social media platforms if people want to find you and research you or else. i am at hip pillow um on instagram at hip pillow uh, on facebook and at hip pillow plus on youtube and uh, twitter I, i'm not too too active on twitter um but i am active on him um, all Instagram. three other three yeah and thank you so much for your time i really appreciate you inviting me to your podcast and i really enjoyed our talk yeah. i you know i i'm, I'm really appreciative and you know gratitude absolutely, absolutely. thank you stay right there for a quick second i'm going to close us out guys there you have had it again going back to what i always say preach on is that marriage between health as well as business for business owners entrepreneurs and even if you're not a business owner with everything going on in our environment now the key and getting back to our foundation our health and feeling good and and that self-care it's valentine's day here in the u.s loving on yourself by you know taking care of yourself and looking at ways and creative ways that you can do that and our our guest uh, Sadie Sohota about the hip pillow is one way that you can give back to yourself, love on yourself, alleviate yourself of pain that you don't have to have, and just overall comfort and getting good rest and sleep is so critical. So that's going to wrap it up for me, Valerie Williams of Dimensional Town Streams, redirecting you in being fruitful and multiplying. See you next week. Everybody. Happy, Bye. happy, ha happy Valentine's Day also. I, yeah.